Good afternoon, everyone. This is Sonia Holzer, CFWC Communications Chairman, and today is our communications workshop. So back to basics. Uh, today at one o'clock on July, we are doing everything about communications with your members. So sit back and please get your questions ready because we look forward to talking with you. See you soon. Okay, I hit continue, we're recording. Welcome everybody to the Summertime Back to the Basics series. We have uh, two days of communication for you today. And um, I just wanna say how proud I am of the California Federation of Women's Clubs communication team. We uh, were met with a challenge last March. It was uh, something the whole world went through called COVID. And um, this team really stepped up to the plate. They have kept things going. There is communication in any form, should you want it. All you have to do is um, open your computer, literally sign up for Quick Bytes, sign up on the website to uh, get news and notes come to these meetings for Zoom and um, open up your California club woman, look at Facebook, all of these things. And now we also have YouTube available. And, um, you know, I'm, I, just like I said, I'm so proud of this team because I think that in a world that shuts down, starts to go into slow motion, and eventually gets into a stage of emergence, communications is our biggest weapon. And it's a weapon of choice. And so thank you for all choosing to be here today, to listening to what everyone has to offer. It's gonna be a lot of fun for you. I, um, I wanna tell you that, I, and I put the team together and I, I some people, I, I, I assumed would just be taking on the job again. Vicki, thank you so much for staying on. <laughs> and thank you for asking. Some people I, I went out and saw it like Debbie and Sonia and Lou contacted me about the California club woman. I, communications is a two-way street and our only parameter is that we should try and stay in the crosswalk because when we jaywalk, we could get a ticket or hit by a car. We don't know what's gonna happen because we cannot control out of the crosswalk. But if we're all in that crosswalk together, going back and forth, and it's so funny because Debbie probably remembers, she remembers my paperwork from today from a, quite a long time ago. I think it was like 2014 that I, 2014 when I did some of the things we'll talk about today. But I also did around that same time a communication is a two-way street in a crosswalk presentation. And that's what this reminds me of. We're all in the crosswalk together. And Linda Queen, thank you, thank you, thank you for saying yes. She's um, a past leads and I wanted to make sure that as many leads graduates as possible were on this board. Tony Lima, thank you. You're on the publications committee. I don't know if uh, Chris Herzog is here as well. And um, I, I just think it's so important that we stay in touch. And it's not just the obvious people because you're gonna hear from Reggie Mag Maddox today. Reggie is our CFWC Director of Finance. And it is important that you talk to your finance people about communications because communications is not cheap. You're gonna find that out the more you communicate. And, um, you know, it, it just is what it is. And so I'm so happy to see a lot of you here. Sonia and Barbara, uh, Barbara Riley Beard, do you have any words as Dean before just we get say, started? Thank you very much for being here. It's nice to see all your smiling faces. So thank you yeah. for being here today. It's going to be a good time. They, they're well prepared. Yes. Yes. And Sonia Holtz, housekeeping. Thank you so much and welcome everyone. We're really happy to, that you're here today and I'm so proud of this team and I'm so grateful to have the opportunity to be part of it. And you will be so happy 
with all the information that you learned today. Now, today is a little bit different of a format than what we usually have. Today we have, um, I think it's nine speakers and in between each section, we're going to have a question and answer period so that you don't have to wait until the end to ask your question. So therefore we're not limiting it to one, but we ask you to be mindful that there are a lot of people in the room. So to keep your questions uh, uh, pointed and non-sharing. Also remember that we are recording. So Debbie will help me with muting and timing. Um, so muting, so let's talk about muting. We always ask you to mute and there's a reason why. It's because if you all, all of our speakers are open, then they start to plan each other and you'll notice there's a tremendous amount of noise. So we ask you to be, uh, stay in the mute mode. Um, if you would like to take a moment, if your dog needs a hug or you spill your coffee all over yourself, take that moment. And the way that you do that is you go to the bottom left-hand side of your screen with your mouse mm -hmm. and there's something that's called stop video. And you can stop your video that you're not leaving the meeting, but that gives you that minute to get up and go do, do what you need to do and come back and it doesn't have to be recorded. Um, I am reminding you that you are being recorded because we are now going from Dropbox recordings to YouTube recordings and it will be on YouTube in a public forum for the rest of your entire life. So just be very mindful of what you're doing on film so that you don't get caught in a recording that you don't actually want to do. The other thing we wanna make sure that you understand is that please don't share your name, your telephone number or club information that shouldn't be shared on a public forum. We will at some point turn off the recording and then you can ask those kind of questions. Um, raising your hand. Okay, so here's what you do. You take your mouse, go to the bottom. Everyone, let's practice. So at the bottom of your screen, there's a reactions button and you can raise and lower your hand. Very good, thank you so much. We want to make sure that everyone can participate. And Lynn, I did not ask you ahead of time, are you willing to work chat today, Lynn? Yes. So for those of you that cannot raise your hand, we have enabled chat and chat is just for questions for people that cannot raise their hand. Otherwise it gets too much information there and it's hard to manage. So please be aware of that. If you have an iPad, you tap on the screen if you wanna raise your hand and it shows a little triad of little participants and you tap on that and the blue hand and your name will appear in the, on the list as to when you got into line. If that doesn't work, again, remember, you are always welcome to go into chat. And if you cannot do that, you might wanna make a little sign that says I'm raising my hand so that we can identify you as a group and get your question uh, answered for you. Uh, we ask that you rename yourself as to the position that you hold within the organization at every meeting so that as a, everyone is planning their meetings and doing their credentialing and taking your name down, they know where you fit in the organization and what title you hold. Um, so let view, view is uh, either gallery or speaker view. We do something during our meetings called spotlight. If you take your mouse and go all the way to the top right hand side of your screen, there's a teeny tiny little word up there that says view. If you click on that, you have two choices. You can see everyone in a gallery view, or you can see one person that's speaking in speaker view. All right. So if all of this is terribly confusing and you are done with technology, every Sunday I have a help desk and actually my team has volunteered to step in. So one week we'll do websites, one week we'll do PowerPoint, one week we'll do how to write an article. They've actually volunteered to come in and, and make them specialized and that's fantastic. Thank you, everyone. Um, the Zoom codes do not change. I put them on the Facebook page every Saturday or it is a wonderful thing to keep in your back pocket, write down the communications email. It's CFWC communications, plural, at gmail.com. You can ask us any question that you want in that and we will either send it to the person that needs to get it or we will do our best at answering those for you. Okay, so I think that's everything. Back to you, Pam. There we go, thank you. I had to unmute myself. Um, a lot of you were at the team building workshop, which was very important. We, I talked for a long time about team building the basics of personalities and putting those teams together. So we're not going to re go over, recover all of that stuff. We're gonna talk about a few new items. I think one of the most important communications 
tools is the word yes. And someone here who's not technically on the communications team, but she is, Lynn Youngstrom, said yes when I called her and said, can you help me with the open houses, with these workshops, because keeping up on the emails and the registration is a lot of work. And she said yes before she didn't even hear the, the job. And I think that that is a, a really important thing to start out with. So thank you very much for Lynn Youngstrom. You said yes, and I so appreciate that. That is an important part of communications. When we're looking at teams, I think that everything I've said ahead of time is very important, but there are a few things that you need to remember. Several years ago at an area meeting, I was handing out jelly bellies in muffin containers to people. If you were there, you know what's coming. If you weren't, be prepared to be amazed. Jelly bellies, truly one of the wonderful candies, no dairy in them. However, jelly bellies are all different, just like us. We are all different. And when you put those jelly bellies together in a container, it's like putting your members in a clubhouse to communicate with one another. Some of you like the licorice jelly bellies, some of you don't, and that's okay. We don't always like everyone who's in the clubhouse. But for the most part, when we put together different teams and we have the fruity jelly bellies and the sour jelly bellies, and I happen to love the licorice jelly bellies, each time we take a few and take a bite, that's a new team, that's a new communication method, and it's a new taste. It brings a whole new flavor to whatever we're doing in club. And I want you to remember that because I think it's an important lesson that we are like the Jelly Bellies and we are available to all of those different flavors. And as I said, not everybody is our particular flavor, but we still include them in that mix of Jelly Bellies. So remember that. I think that that's an important part of team building and maybe someday we'll We'll get together and have Jelly Bellies again, because I know I used to do that as a major membership um, exercise, and I thought it was a lot of fun, because we all like to eat the Jelly Bellies, too. People would just pick them up and say, are they mine? And of course, they're yours. I'm not going to give you Jelly Bellies and then take them back. That would not be a good thing to do. So I just want to do a few highlights, because I only have 10 minutes, and I gave you four pages. And I, and I was trying to think about the most important things that I've learned that I have not mentioned in the past. And one of them is getting dragged down is a drag. So let go of the personal. You have heard me so many times talk about team building and personal. We need to also remember with communications, it can get too personal with what you share. WWW stands for World Wide Web. So anything you put out there could conceivably come back to you another time. We see it all the time in politics. Well, we didn't know that anybody was videotaping. Well, yeah, they were, and it's come back at you. So always remember World Wide Web. Keep the personal and the club teamwork personalities, keep it separate. It's, it's nice to go up and say, I love your outfit. I haven't seen you forever. I'm so excited to, to impart this stuff with you and give people hugs. And hopefully we're gonna be doing that again very soon in this state. But you also have to remember that you just can't say, if you were the last person on earth, I wouldn't eat lunch with you. Because I've had that said to me. And this was a CFWC chairman when I was a district president who said that to me. And that was personal. And the thing that made her the angriest about it was I was like, okay, well, your loss, I was gonna pay. I didn't take it personally. <laughs> What's, I don't think it's just the acting training because I've been told I hate your shoes. You're not being called back. Okay, fine. 
You don't like my shoes, I like them, doesn't matter. But keep the personal out of it. Multi-generational members, that's something we don't hear a lot about. And when I used to do as a leadership chair in 2016, I talked about the five generations. Well, we have a couple more now. So I just wanna go over those. The GI generation, 1901, 1926. We still have a lot of those people around. They had a very different lifestyle than we did. The silent generation, 1927 to 1945. My parents were part of that generation. And I, I, every generation has different value systems. They put different um, emphasis on personal. They put different emphasis on how they dress, what they buy or hoard or collect or how they even keep their finances straight. My grandfather, GI generation, he wrote down every single item every day in a little spiral notebook that he kept in his pocket. If he had a piece of Wrigley's gum, he pulled it out and wrote it down. He lived through the depression. He came from Yugoslavia at age four uh, and through Ellis Island. That's just the way he lived. My father, very good with money, but he didn't write down everything, but he kept his books little different with each generation. The baby boomers, I'm a baby boomer, 1946 to 1964 were a very big group and we're very inclusive of one another and we have different ideals and we were we came up in the, in a time where we were under the tables in elementary school because it was the Cold War. We, we grew up also during the Vietnam War, which was not cold. That was a very hot topic item. It, the Vietnam War is one of the reasons I joined the military. I couldn't protest something I didn't know about. So I joined the military to find out what was going on. We have the Gen Xers, 65 through, um, 81, things start moving. This is when we started getting a lot more technically oriented. I grew up in an analog world and had to learn digital to compete at work. I was a supervisor. The state of California in the civic areas got rid of supervisors. There were very few of us left and they were weeding us out. And so in order to keep your job and stay a supervisor, you learn what you can. So you learn digital and you're learning it from the Xers and you're learning it from the millennials, which came next. And um, they were 1981 to 1996. They are also called Generation Y, Generation Y.1, Y.2. Take a look at what I've given you because a lot of it is gonna be explained there. And by then we are fully into digital world, which is where we are now in communications. It's all digitized. Generation Z, or 1997 through 19, <laughs> It means 2012, okay? And then generation A is where we are now, 2012. <clears throat> Each of these generations has something to offer and it's up to you when communicating and when putting things together to have things done to realize that each of these generations I have managed to, to get in here, they all speak English but they don't understand the same English from one generation to the next. And it's your job to really get into that. I, okay, what does that mean? First time I heard a boy call a girl fly, I thought it was an insult. Oh, she's so fly. And I was like, oh, all I could think of was like that Vincent Price movie where the hairy little fly was running around and going, help me, help me. And, and it's like, uh, that is the worst thing you could call her. And he goes, oh no, Pam, that's a good thing. So that's when I learned, okay, I need to start learning the new language as well because fly is a good thing. But the word bad has changed. The word gay has changed. All sorts of these words mean something different. And in other countries where English is spoken, 
they mean something different too. So when you're communicating, please remember that every generation speaks English in our clubs for the most part, but not all of them speak the same English. I have some tips that uh, hopefully you're gonna read through, but I wanna go to the first page and just end up with that in my last eight minutes of the workshop. And I use the word action because communication is an action word. To communicate is an action. And we have to remember that when we take action to communicate, we do it in the best way possible to include everyone and to make everyone comfortable and to keep everyone moving forward because an action word means momentum. We are moving. Even if we have to move off to the side, march in place until you catch up. It's so important that you don't try too hard because you're gonna be frustrated. Keep your own pace. It's okay to move off to the side, but also try never to take a step backwards in communication. We have a lot of club women who have come so far this year in communication. And that is the thanks to a lot of people in this room. I cannot take credit for it. I can only take credit for introducing some of them to one another. That's what I did. Yes, I picked individual people based upon individual talent, but the only credit I can take for where they have flown is I introduce them. A little like giving birth. You give birth, they grow up. You can kind of try and keep it together, but is it really your job? Yes, you need to set parameters. People need parameters, team needs parameters, but they also need to be given the opportunity to fly and soar on their own. And that's also an action in itself. So on page one, A, actually try to get every member in your club and district known to you. Know what their names are. Start small by learning their names that regularly, you know, those ladies at 10, 10 meetings regularly. Remember trivial, trivial things like hobbies. I think it's, it's fun when you, when you do like the speed dating you see on television and stuff. And, and I think it's probably pretty close to that. Ask people what they're interested in. Ask them, do you collect metal lunch pails? Because I do. Is that a metal lunch pail? Is your purse? How cute. Purses, a great conversation starter. So many of us have them. And so just try to get people's names known. Okay, because it's important. Jackie Pierce, GFWC International President, uh, early 2010s, uh, around there, I think. Vicki Holden, correct me if I'm wrong. Do you know how she got to know me? We had the same handbag. We both had the same handbag. She came up to me and she said, I just had, and she was the international president at a convention. I just have to introduce myself because you have exquisite taste. And she held up her bag and I held up mine. We forever knew one another. After that, she always sought me out and said hi to me when she was around California. C, call members and call on members. Email is great, but it's highly dispersonal. Send a card call members on the phone, utilize members at meetings to help them feel included. So important. If you haven't seen a member for a while, send them a card. Send a Christmas card. Dory sends Christmas cards every year to every club. I, I, it just, I know she starts like in August. I, not my thing, but I have no problem with saying who wants to help and seeing the hands go up and calling on every single one of those people and saying, keep your hand in the air. I am writing all of your names down. I will have you help me because it's important that we let people do that. T, touch, don't teach. We are a bold version of club members, team members, and we do not need to be told what to do too much. None of us like it. But when we educate our members, 
we cannot lecture, but we can touch people. It's so important to remember that you can touch people in so many ways with just your spirit. And it makes people feel great. I, I cannot do this alone. Not one of us that's speaking today could have done this alone. We could write our little module alone, but we still had to send it to somebody. They had to put it together. We tried to get it out in a, in a format. And yes, we know that Microsoft Office is wreaking havoc still with us after it's been three weeks yesterday for me. And I think I finally have figured out how to make it work on my computer, but we're all gonna have to go through that and ask people, you cannot do it alone. Oh, one member can be effective. We all know that, it's a fact. However, we rarely, rarely celebrate it. Remember, it takes one member to begin a flow of positive or negative. You choose your reaction and don't make it personal, okay? There is such thing as cancer in membership. And I'm not talking about a physical form, but it is just as dangerous as a physical form. And I'm gonna close it with this and then it's up to questions and answers. And not to brag, but GFWC is important and CFWC is as well. We have over 8,000 Federation members in California, 18 districts, 206 clubs and seven affiliate clubs. Just so you know, we are 14.1% of GFWC, period. That is a huge percentage of this organization. And that's the action I took today. Any questions? <laughs> Terry, go ahead and unmute yourself. There is one question. Thank you, Terry. Good morning. Um, I'm sorry, but I don't know what an affiliate club is. It's like um, a past president's club, a parliament, some parliamentary. I know some of them are real are, are general clubs, but some parliamentary clubs are also affiliate clubs. The Emeritus uh, Club in California that meets only at the um, convention is an affiliate club. W which district are you from, Terry? Los Cerritos. Los Cerritos. So Barbara, that's your district. Do you have any affiliate clubs in Los Cerritos? No, we don't. Sorry. Uh, no affiliates in ours. No affiliates. Just but, the 11 clubs. <laughs> But sometimes, you know, we do, we, and, and there's so few of them. You saw, you heard that it was just seven mm -hmm. now. And um, we had many more, but COVID really kind of went through what people wanted to do. Do we want to pay dues for two clubs? Do we want to pay one, one club's dues? Does, is this club going to stand alone on its own? Or do we just want to get back to the basics with the other clubs? So um, we lost several affiliate clubs. And um, a few of the general clubs this year, as you can tell by the numbers, because we were at over 10,000. But we're going to get those numbers up again, because 10,000 is what we ended with on December 31st. And I know that once we can get back into the clubhouses and meet again, we'll get those numbers up, those numbers. We have one more question with Wendy, and this is going to be our last question in this section. Wendy? Excellent. Thank you, Madam President and, uh, and Sonia. We have in San Bernardino District, we have the We Been There Club and the, and the title says it all. It is for past district presidents. We, we have a, 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 an ascribed, we meet once, maybe twice a year, usually right before convention. We, uh, we also sponsor a $50 membership award to the club that brings in the most number of members 50 years or younger. 
And, and that's something that we do. We also contribute to the district nurses scholarship. Now, I must say we have, uh, we now have five current members and two honorary members. Uh, a couple of our members have passed. So it's simply a way for us to honor uh, some of the things that go on in the district. Thank you, Thank Wendy. You. Uh -huh. All right, so my dear teammates, I'm going to be setting a timer for 10 minutes. And then when that 10 minutes is up, I'll open up my mic and it'll go like a big loud ringing phone. And one, I'll give it to you right at 10 and then you can wrap up for questions. If you guys don't mind, I appreciate your help. Um, we are going to move into our next section, but before I do, I have been reminded just to let you guys know that I asked my entire team to write up, if you ask them to come and speak at your club or district, what their speeches would be. So we have an entire set in the booklet called the speaker series for 21 to 22. And that gives you a really good working knowledge as to what you could ask us to come and do with you, okay? All right, fantastic. Thank you, Lou, again, for doing that. All right, so we're gonna move on to our, our, you know, we just have so many fantastic members and we have a Quick Bites editor and she is Vicki Holden and I'd like to introduce her to you. And Vicki, would you, um, I have set the re security so you can share your screen. Okay, I won't be doing that, but uh, thank you very much. And this hopefully this will be short and quick and bites. You can see from my background, I'm sort of advertising if you have not already subscribed please do. It's very easy. Go to the website, click on publications, down to Quick Bites, and then there's a place you can sign up. So please do. Back to newsletters, which is what Quick Bites really is. What is a newsletter? A newsletter is a small newspaper containing news of interest chiefly to a special group, like your club or your district. Um, the uh, definition of editor is a person who is in charge and determines the final content final content, content, if I could speak on you'd know what I was saying, uh, content of a text, particularly a newspaper or magazines. Why do we have a newsletter? It's to fill in, and it's probably the most important piece of communication. Don't tell my teammates this, but it really is because it gets to the every single general member of your club, and that's what it should be doing. Uh, it, it just puts, brings everything together, it's friendly, you can put things in a newsletter you wouldn't put in other places that are more public. But um, if you don't have a newsletter in your club or district, please consider doing it. It is so important. Quick Vice was developed for just this reason. Information was not flowing freely from the state level to the district level, to the club level, to the club member. And they got information in the club, in the club woman. They got information in uh, from the state board but it didn't always make it through every step down to the bottom. Quick Bites, anybody can join. Anybody can get all the information that there is to get in a quick, concise manner. And so we fill the voids between the state board meetings, between the club woman uh, issuance. And uh, so your newsletter also fills a gap between club meetings and other events. So please, if you don't have one, start one. And uh, the one you have, if you, have not recently done it, you need to take a survey, mental survey of your club. What kind of members do you have? Are they more mature as in they've been in federation for a long time? Are they brand new and have no clue what Hobie or GFWC or any of those, you know, shot, shot at life, they have no idea what any of those are. So you need to explain those in your newsletter to help them along. Um, it's, newsletters are very flexible. You can put almost anything in them. Usually they contain messages from your chairman, from your president and first vice president, any other officer that you need to have included. But it also can be expanded to include uh, interviews with some of your members. It can be, uh, you could have a uh, cartoon of the week or month. You could have recipe section. You can have uh, all kinds of things. It's up to you to personalize it for your members so that they're interested in reading the entire issue. So they get all the details and all the reports. Uh, Distribution is another problem that we have. And if you have, not, if not all your club members are active on the internet, how do you get to them? What do you do? How do you get them to get the newsletter? As we said, we've transitioned into digital, which is wonderful to a degree. But then we still get back to people who, for example, would rather not read a Kindle, but they wanna read a real book. 
They want to feel it and touch it. They don't want to read it online. So how do you get to those people? That's for your club to decide whether you send it by snail mail or if you hand it out personally. The choice is up to you, depending on how big your membership is. But consider people that are not as digital as we are. We don't want them to feel left out. We don't want them to feel abandoned. We want them to still continue to be a part because they've contributed a great deal and they continue to contribute with their wisdom and their energy and their memories. So please, if, if at all possible, make sure that they get a newsletter as well. Um, when does your newsletter come out? Does it come out right after the meeting or does it come out just before the next meeting? My suggestion is that it come out in between, halfway between. That way you're picking up the details from your meeting and you're telling people what to expect at the next meeting. If they need to bring something for the food pantry, if they need to make sure that they've sold all 20 tickets that they were assigned, they've got a little bit of time to get that done before the meeting. So find a time that's good. Uh, to you editors in particular, have a deadline for the time that they have to get the information to you. It, is, it makes life so much easier if we abide by deadlines. President Pam did her best during the last convention. We had a strict deadline and we stuck to it and it was very successful. Uh, some of our clubs, just if, for example, a luncheon reservation, so they're supposed to have it in on Monday, they call you on Wednesday, you go, oh yeah, fine, I'll add you to the list. That's hard for the people preparing the lunch or for the restaurant that's waiting for you. So um, the same goes for a printed or digital copy of your newsletter. Ha allow yourself enough time to have the, a, de a deadline for the people submitting the information, a deadline for you to have it ready to go, and then a deadline to have it actually out. It gives you time to to confer, if for example, somebody sends you an article that you didn't, you're not sure about uh, details or whatever, then please uh, allow yourself enough time to contact that person. For example, for quick bites, they send me everything via email, which is wonderful, I love it. And they say there's an attachment and once in a while, there's no attachment. Mm -hmm. So I really need time to contact that person to get the attachment and move on. Um, what do you do when you get your articles? If you're an editor, your job is to read them, to put them in a in a proper place, a proper way. Uh, edit them with punctuation and change, change little bits of wording. Uh, if I can share a personal story, it's, well, it wasn't me personally. However, we had um, in my club a long time ago, we had a newsletter editor who uh, lived life like she was on I-5. She went straight to the deadline. She was straight on the highway to her destination. At that same time, we had a president who was living on I-90, on, Highway 99 or Highway 395. Oh, look at Chats Bakery. Oh, look over here. Oh, let's go here. And she eventually got to the end, but there were a lot of little detours and she spoke and wrote just that way. So the editor, who was Dolores and Betty, by the way, they were lifelong friends. They had been in juniors together. They transitioned into the women's club and they'd been longtime members of the women's club and their families were friends. They were really good, good friends, but they just had different styles. Mm -hmm. So one time Dolores just decided this article is terrible. Betty wrote it, but it doesn't make any sense. And I'm going to change it. And she did. Betty read it and she called Dolores and said, you changed my article. Dolores tried to explain to her why she did it. And she says, I wrote it the way I wanted it to appear. So handy hint, if you're editing someone's work, do it gently. If you must make large changes, please contact them first. Um, you've got your articles. You know what you're going to do. Do you have a template to put all this information on? Mm -hmm. uh, on the handout, there's uh, some resources for you to go look at different templates, different headers. Make sure your, your newsletter has a header so that people see it from a distance. They go, oh, that's the, the newsletter. I, I, I have to read that. Um, as you see, Quick Bites has a header. It's been the same one since it started 10 years ago and will probably remain pretty much the same. We can thank our president, Pam Ament, for not only naming Quick Bites through a contest, but de developing our logo as well. We thank her for that. Um, as I said, develop a template, go to the resources, look around, see what att attracts you, what you think your club would like, um, and work with it. And make sure you check with your president though while you're doing that. Uh, it's her administration. Please, please, please check with your president. Um, I will tell you one more thing, and that's about deadlines. I uh, was in a printer shop not too long ago and I looked over the counter and there was a very large banner and it says procrastination on your part does not constitute an emergency on my part. Therefore, get everything in on time, please. And if you're submitting something for your editor, please just do it. Uh, I'm used to speaking in quick bites, so I'm going to close right now and thank you very much for listening. 
and uh, we'll see you later. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vicki. Are there any questions for Vicki on the floor? I do. Catherine Chu, you have a question for Vicki? Yes. Hi, Vicki. So good to see you. You too. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, I have two questions. Uh, the program that you're using, what would you suggest um, for the newsletters? I know there's publisher, but I'm just wondering if there's something else out there that maybe has a little bit more of a polish to it. And then the second question is, I have saved the quick bites, um, the, um, the email so that I can get it in my email box. And for some reason, I always have to go and fish it out of my spam. And I've changed my settings so that, you know, because I saw there was something in the settings that said, like, oh. I don't know, it was alerted as spam. So I changed that, but I'm still having to go in and fish it out. But oh. I'm not having to do that with, like, the California Reserve or, or other things. So are, why? Okay. Yeah. Are you, have you put QuickBice in your address book? I have. I put it in the address book. So I don't know why. Uh, Oh, do you have, a, you st there was a time, and I haven't gotten the new word yet, so the new word program, I'm holding off on that. But it used to be on your email, it would say uh, priority and then other email. Yeah. Does it divide it into that? Yes. Okay, well then click on that and say you do not want it separated. And that, oh. should, put it in your, that should put it directly into your email box. Okay, thank you. And then was there another uh, program that you can suggest? Uh, if you're doing it yourself and you're going to do it as an attachment to an email to your members, I use uh, Publisher. Okay. You can do it in Word. On the handout, there are some lists of ways you downloading templates and whatever they can use and how to use them. So I'm going to let you use your own creativity on that one. Right, but I use, I, use, I use Publisher because it's easier for me okay. uh, to do. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you very much. And thank you, Vicki, that was amazing. We really appreciate your knowledge and your, your time that you spend with us making that amazing uh, newsletter for us every week. You're very um, kind and it's my pleasure. Thank you. All right, on to our next team member. Budgets are crucial and very important. And we have Reggie Maddox. She is going to come in and tell us how to plan your communications budget. Thank you, Reggie, for being here with us today. Thank you, Sonia. Um, I'm a part of this committee because the bylaws state that. So um, that is, the director of finance is always part of the communication committee. Uh, my job and, on this committee is to kind of oversee the expenditures and um, kind of determine a budget and um, to try to stick to it as much as we can. This year, of course, as we've said, has been an exceptional year because we have introduced all kinds of new things. And um, because we have a proposed budget, then we kind of work around what, what we have. And we've done really, really well. Um, when you as a club and district are looking at what you wanna do in your um, uh, communication department, don't forget to figure in your budget and how you're going to uh, pay for all of this wonderful things. Many of you already uh, use websites and um, ha have that already kind of figured in, but if you go into anything else, uh, don't forget to include that into your budget. I did present a, kind of a handout that listed some things that you might wanna consider. Uh, don't let them sneak up on you because there can be a vast amount of money being spent on this. And, and if you um, have all these great plans and haven't thought about how much money it's going to be, it could be kind of shocking. So um, when you're um, working on this, especially starting now when many of you are planning your budgets, make sure that you have added in communications in that proposed budget. Um, the, I included a yearbook. Uh, yearbooks um, sometimes are, have not been always in your um, uh, communication department, but we have included them in this. Uh, it, again, think about cutting expenses in that area and putting your yearbook, doing it digitally, like we uh, have here on, in the CF. That's going to cut down your expenses there that maybe can be used in another area because your books can get very expensive if you're printing all of them, especially for a large club. 
um, I was glad that uh, we just listened to Vicky talk about newsletters because a very important way of communicating. And um, but don't leave out the people who don't have the email uh, capabilities to get that newsletter. And we at one time I heard uh, someone say, well, if they don't have email, they can just do without the newsletter, but they're probably the ones that need it the most. So if you can't hand deliver it, then please, please make sure and stick a 55 cent stamp on it and send it to them. Because in our club, we have a lady who is now, I think she turned 103 in December and she gets that newsletter and loves it. She's of course an honorary member. And uh, I think that that does more for her than probably all the rest of the members in our club because it's so important to her and she doesn't do email. But think about all of the people in your club, even those that can't participate because it is important for them. Um, you're, I, many of you are going to continue with Zoom this year, even though um, you may be meeting in person, maybe trying to do a hybrid type of communication. Your Zoom uh, does cost something. Uh, the president or a generous member of your club should not be absorbing that cost. If your club is small, you can get that Zoom for not too much money, but please include it in your budget because an individual shouldn't be handling that cost. Um, if you're going to do hybrid meetings and you're going to hear some more about that and they're going to be experts on that, uh, they're going to take some additional equipment that you're going to hear about, a uh, computer, uh, possibly cameras, mics, and um, other things. So you need to include that also. I also um, uh, think that we need to start looking at other resources such as maybe help from junior college. Maybe they have even some old computers sitting around that aren't being used that maybe by working with them and uh, on an exchange program, we might be even to get some of that kind of equipment that uh, we can use and not have to budget it. And you may be thinking, well, how in the world is my budgets already so stretched? How can I do it? There's a couple of things I want to suggest and then I'm going to sign off. Have a special event, a small patio sale or um, maybe even a small bunco party this summer to raise some money and uh, for strictly for communications. There's also, um, you can take a certain percentage of all your fundraisers, um, a small percentage of all of them, and you save that for your general funds using that for your, um, for your communications. So both ways are, are fine, but um, please do not forget to budget because we, we do communicate in so many ways and uh, it, does, it does cost money. And we just need to remember to, uh, to do that. We could even consider in a way attending district and state conferences as a way of communicating. It's kind of a far stretch, but uh, consider uh, paying for people to attend those because that's the way that, that they are communicating back to your club. Um, I. I can't really do a lot of specifics because every club size varies in the expense that you're, that you're going to, the larger the club, the more expense you're going to have on all of these items. Uh, just kind of roughly speaking, uh, your books in a medium sized club, a lot of times are $200. Don't forget the cost of your website. Don't depend on some generous club member to generously do that job for you. Uh, that is not fair to them. And it's unrealistic in, a, in your, your expectations on your club. Again, a couple of hundred dollars probably can get you um, an experienced person to do that. So give it a thought and, and put that into your budget. So I think that that are the, main, are the main points that I wanted to point out today, Sonia. So I am willing to answer any questions if you have something, but- uh, Fantastic. Other Thank you so much, Reggie. Um, we do have a question on the floor. Catherine, Catherine, you have a question? Hi, thank you, Reggie. Uh, I'm not sure if this question is for you. Maybe it needs to be pushed and, and, and asked of Sonia. Um, on the uh, under communications on, uh, I can only think of Facebook right now under social media, where there is an option to boost the posts or do advertising. Are we currently doing anything like that for CFWC under like uh, that you can think of that would be, um, um, you know, getting getting more uh, of the outside we, our public? Yeah. Okay, so I what hear you on that. Absolutely. We do not boost on Facebook. 
And there's, uh, it hasn't been proven for a nonprofit that that works as effectively as just a really good sharing system where everyone networks to their pages. It's Thank a, you. yeah, we're not actually trying to reach an outside audience. We're trying to reach an internal audience. So, Thank you. Yeah, but thank you for asking that. Now in your club, that would be a different conversation because you're trying to get people to sign up for an event at your club. So that would be a conversation that you call me and we do on the help desk and I'll help you learn how to do that. And Linda Kuntz, you had a question for Reggie? Yes, uh, basically uh, just a, a comment um, regarding the different uh, various ways that uh, Reggie was talking about communicating. And also what Catherine had just said about boosting. Um, I know that that also costs. It's a small amount, but it adds up. Uh, what I One thing I was going to suggest I didn't see on the list, and I don't know how many clubs or districts do it, is next door is unbelievable. And in our club, we have really uh, gotten quite a few from uh, not only our club Facebook page and our website, but uh, next door and they have a whole list you can just choose okay and those and those are and those are free yes yeah yeah and they're free the one thing I just wanted to say real quick is that you're limited to your area but the thing is they give you your choices so if you want to choose like 10,000 homes in your neighborhood I mean it, it really goes out to quite a few but I would strongly encourage anybody who's not on it it, it really is great. They have categories for volunteers and what have you. So. Okay, thank you, Linda, I appreciate that. It doesn't really belong in the budget situation, but that could be a share during the open share. But thank you for that information. Reggie, we wanna thank you so much for coming here today and supporting us in every way that you do. You make it possible for this fantastic team to do the dream along with Pam. And I can't tell you how much we appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so our next speaker, oh, you're, welcome. Is, Thank you're you. so welcome. And I love your background. If I could just be there with you, I would love it so much. Um, so our next speaker is our website chairman. She's newer on the team. Welcome, Linda. Uh, and we look forward to what you're presenting today all about websites. Thank you, Sonia. Uh, welcome, ladies. Thank you for being here. And uh, as website manager, one of my, my main job is to handle the CFWC website. Um, however, a lot of the content that you might find on the state website may not be pertinent to or necessary to be on a club website. So today we're going to talk about club websites specifically, and I'm going to share some ideas on how to make yours as relevant and as engaging as possible. Throughout the state, we have numerous clubs who maintain only a Facebook page, and they have no website. Fortunately, many more clubs have realized these media platforms serve different purposes and have embraced the concept of having both. Today, I want you to mainly begin with coming to terms with the necessity of having a website. Websites have been around many years and designing one is not the daunting task it once was. Some techie know-how is helpful, of course, but there are numerous popular, easy to learn web design programs available to you. It's true that newer members might be better candidates for assisting your club with building or maintaining a website, but there are other possibilities. For example, you might hire a website developer or ask tax, tech savvy friends or family members, and perhaps contact a high school or a community college computer class for assistance. The first thing you'd need to do would be secure a domain name, and it should include obviously your club name and ideally also the GFWC acronym. For example, GFWC Anytown Women's Club.org. Typically, a nonprofit group will use the .org as a suffix. If your club name is a bit obscure, for example, the Good Morning Club or the Ladies Social Club and so on, I suggest that you do a Google search using these words that are in your name to make sure that there is no undesired surprise on the results list. Sometimes some of these words trigger things that we don't realize when you're doing a Google search and websites that come up may not be what you would want potential members to see first. So what is the goal with your website? Frankly, if your club cannot be found online these days, 
it is as if you do not exist. Creating an online space to share your club's mission and promote this contributions to the community is absolutely vital. A well-designed website is the best way to attract new members. Today's potential members will, guaranteed, want to check out your website before they join your club. Keep in mind that club and district websites represent the entire CFWC and GFWC organization, although in a local community. Content or posts on your website or your Facebook page cannot and must not conflict with any aspect of our organization. A website requires up-to-date, fresh, and easy to find information. There's nothing worse than opening a site and seeing old information from a year ago or longer. Sadly, that may be the only chance that club gets to engage a potential member. That person's enthusiasm to learn more is dead or dying, and you will never know that you've missed out on her. Keep things current. Remove outdated content quickly. Shoot for adding new content or photos about one time once a week. While preparing for this workshop, I visited websites that I found through CFWC.org's clubs page. And I noticed that there were a lot of outdated messages on various websites relating to earlier or past COVID restrictions that they're still living on their websites. If you are now back in business, you need to update your website as soon as possible to let people know that you are or when you plan on having your first meeting. So there are six things that we're gonna talk about briefly to, that a good nonprofit website should have. Now a nonprofit website such as ours is a little different from a retail business website or something along those lines. The first one is to prominently show the organization's purpose and goal. Usually the first thing people wanna know when visiting a nonprofit's website is what exactly the organization does, what services it offers, and who it is designed to help. A brief informative description of your organization should be right on the homepage. Second, have a feel that matches what you offer and what you serve. It is important that the overall vibe be friendly and engaging. It shouldn't be too stuffy or stuck up, yet not too casual or flippant. You are hoping to engage people to either support you or consider joining. Do this through a color scheme, the font, photos, and particularly how your activities or projects are described. Don't give the impression through your website that someone wouldn't be welcome or that there are too high expectations of your club members. Third, make it easy to contribute to your organization. Donations are critical to nonprofits and women's clubs are no different. Thus, it's important that a, don't, that a website display a quick and easy method to donate to the cause. The further down a page a donate button sits, the less likely people are to find it. If you choose to encourage donations through your website, put it at the top right side of the homepage. Four, show the organization's expertise on its service and its subject. If you're describing a project that benefits a charitable organization in your community or a wider area, make certain you are using that it's full, correct name, and that all the details that you put on your website about that organization are accurate and correct and current. Perhaps include a link to that organization. I'm talking about things like Shot at Life, Heifer International, or maybe even more local charities that your club supports regularly. Keep all references on your website to GFWC and CFWC leadership current. If you're talking about the GFWC president on a certain page or a CFW president, make sure you're using the current name. I have seen websites where that is not um, remembered that that's living on their website and you click on that and you're reading about uh, past president or past administration. Administrations as we know change every two years. So it's easy to forget. Show in addition to tell what your organization or club does have a photo gallery page or place an active photo or two on each page. Remember that you should obtain permission to use recognizable photos of children, particularly. It's also very good and important to gain permission of your club members to, if you're going to post photos of them on your website. This is often forgotten by uh, website 
chairman and they we figure we can just upload photographs of all of our members on our website because we're all adults and we are all club members. That isn't necessarily the case. You may have a club member that does not want her picture um, blasted on the internet. So it is prudent to check with your club members, perhaps get a, a, an annual every year, get a permission from each of your club members. There is a form that's available that I can access. And uh, in fact, this year I'll be putting it on the website so that clubs can find that. It's a little different from the children's one that we use for our contests. Six, include a news and events section on your website. It's important to give your visitors an incentive to get involved with your club. The easiest way to do this is to add new content very often. A prospective member may visit your site several times before they decide to contact you. Be sure that she sees fresh new news about project activities and include photos. So we're gonna take a look at a couple of website, women's clubs websites, CFWC club websites that I found recently and I wanted to just kind of walk through them quickly with you. So bear with me while I share my screen. Can everyone see that? Okay, this is a club in the Loma Prieta district area A. It's the Redwood City Women's Club. And I want to um, highlight a couple of things. As we move down their homepage, right there is their donate button. So that's front and center and easy to find. As we move down, they do have a COVID-19 advisory, but it does, it's current in that it's encouraging people to uh, look at the current restrictions in their area. And next we see, as we move down these, big pictures and below them a brief explanation and a link to move to the page specific to those topics. And then their club history. I'm still on the home page. So this is easy for a visitor to move through this and see all of this rather quickly at a glance without moving into different pages. That's something to consider and very well done. And then there's very engaging photographs of their club history, et cetera, as we move down. As you move into they're about us. They have a donations page with highlights. It takes a second to load up here. Well, Sorry, that's taking too long. We're gonna to move to another website. This is the Alamo Women's Club. They are also in district, in area A, but they are in the Mount Diablo district. I was very impressed with this website in that it's very clean and simple. As you open up the page, they have their different pages and tabs across the top with a drop down menu. As you move through these, drop down menus, you can easily find the exact item or topic that you're looking for. For example, um, their About Us tab. Well, I apologize, this is not quite opening up as well as I had hoped. Um, that's okay, Linda. Maybe you could redo it yeah. at the end when people are asking questions. Yeah. So let me go back to, I'll stop sharing screen. These two websites, if you do want to take a minute to look at those, I would highly recommend them that you do that maybe on your own time um, and just look and get a good feel for these websites. They, I think they're exemplary and very well done. So what works on a club website? First, the homepage. And on the homepage, typically you would have your mission statement, a brief history of your club. And you would also explain your affiliation with both CFWC and GFWC, including links to both of those websites, if at all possible. Typically there's a leadership tab and that would include photos and brief bios of your officers and the names of your club chairman. Next, you would have a membership tab this would include membership information about your meetings, your dues, how people would join and the membership application. Under the membership tab should not be your members only section. I'll speak to that in just a second. 
Next, you'd have a projects and events tab, also known as what are we do what we're doing. Include active and fun photos of your members and brief descriptions of your projects. Try not to include a lot of photographs on your website of people just a long shot of your club meetings where people are just sitting at your at tables, sort of staring off into space. Those aren't necessarily engaging. It's much better to have photographs showing your members doing things um, actively engaged in their service projects. You might also include in this section your newsletters, and if which Vicki talked about earlier. If you do include your newsletters here, consider just e-blasting a link to your members that would direct them back to your website or right to the newsletter page. One thing to consider that if you put your newsletters on your website, often our newsletters include email addresses of our various chairmen in our clubs that are handling different things. Um, that's a little touchy in that we don't want to broadcast personal email addresses on the web. So sometimes I have seen that websites that are on web, newsletters that are on websites will have been scrubbed of those personal email addresses and direct people to a club email address instead. So that's something to think about. Next, you'd wanna have a contact page and that would include creating a specific email address that people, non-members, could direct questions to you. Um, so you would want to direct, develop a club email address, the club name at gmail.com, for example. How, think, keep in mind that any inquiries received at this email address should be monitored by someone on a regular basis and then redirected to whoever in your club would be able to answer their question. Linda, you have one minute. All right. There would be a members only page, which would be a private section. And that's where you could put your club forms, your club roster, et cetera. And lastly, an online payment method. This would be including your donate button if you choose to have that. And also many clubs are now making it available for club dues to be paid online. This requires a PayPal account and a few other technicalities that um, would need to be looked into. A PayPal account would need to be uh, obtained first and a few details for that. A couple of final hints then. Um, I would suggest that you find time to visit the clubs tab on cfwc.org. And on that tab, you're gonna find links to websites of clubs all over the state. And each one is unique and you will find um, a lot of variety in our club websites. And think about when you're looking at these, what you like, what works and how you can improve your site through mirroring perhaps what they're doing. To be honest, the more consistent and similar, uh, I believe our club websites look and feel, the better we sort of look as an organization. It gives us more of a continuity and more of a similarity um, to that we're all seeing prioritizing the same things. So don't be shy in mirroring to some degree what you like from other websites you'll visit. And lastly, take a few minutes to Google what makes a nonprofit website successful? And you will find some great hints and topics on that topic as well. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you, ladies. I appreciate being here tonight, today. Thank you. Any questions? We have a question from Terry. Terry, you have a question? Yes, thank you, Sonia. And thank you, Linda. Um, all of these tips and tricks that you have talked about, you know, what are the best things and how it should be laid out? Do you have that in writing that you can maybe send out to people? I do. I do. Okay. Yes. It's not attached to the handout booklet today. Um, and there's going to be, Sonia might be talking about this, but we're having a communications boot camp in a few weeks. That's going to give each of us more time. Okay. And uh, so there will be, for those of you that are here today, you know, maybe you'll jump back in on that workshop in a couple of weeks and okay. there will be more information there. Okay. Okay, our second question is Catherine. Catherine, you had a question? Yes, um, Linda, so much great information today. Thank you so much. You. Um, my only other thing is that I noticed on the CFWC website, it doesn't have the, um, it has the, the social media has the Facebook and Twitter, but it doesn't have the YouTube um, icon to the link to follow to the YouTube channel. Is that going to be put up? We will add that. I think the YouTube channel, and Sonia can speak more to this, it's still in flux a little bit, getting the YouTubes in the format and uh, edited to where they're ready to be viewed to the public has been a little bit of a uh, in-process situation. But we will be putting that. Thank you.
Yes, we have an editor and we have 70 videos waiting to be edited. So it will happen. It's just going to take a little bit of time. Um, okay, team, this is our break. I want you guys to go do what you need to do for 10 minutes and I will field questions. If you want to join in, that's great. This gives everyone a chance to get in line and ask us or send us suggestions or share for 10 minutes. You get all yours. You, whatever you want us to try or learn or do, we are open to that conversation and this is your turn. So thank you again, Linda, for everything that you do. The website looks absolutely phenomenal. We could not do it without you. And I just lost you. I'm so sorry. Let me take that spotlight off. Looks like Linda Coots has a question. Maybe yes, I do see that, but I wanted you guys to know we're running right on the line. Um, and so this is the share time. So I want Linda to have that time, but I don't want everyone to, if you have to go to the restroom or get a drink team, this is your time to go do that, okay? Super fast. All right, so um, Linda, go ahead and share it to the room, please. Oh, yes. Okay. Linda, um, a real quick question is, how do I link our club website to the state. The easiest thing to do, Linda, would be to send me an email with your club's email address on it, and then I will do that. Oh, great. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Thank sure. you, Linda. All right. So now this is your chance to tell us what you love about your communications team that we are not doing or that you'd like us to try. We've had a lot of good suggestions. Um, neighborhood is a platform we have looked at. We do not tell you from the state what platform that you need to work on. So if you want to try neighborhood, go ahead, try it. We, we are glad that it's working for you. I have to tell you in my neighborhood group, there's a lot of um, uh, uh, bullying and I don't know why it could just be in my area. So that's why I've just never said a lot about it. So dear teammates, go take your 10 minutes and come back with your big drinks of coffee. And um, come on guys, tell me your ideas. What do you use that you would like us to know about? Come on, I know you're out there. I'm gonna start calling on you. <laughs> How about suggestions for software or apps that you use that people could use? Anything in those areas? Any questions for me? Yes, Lynn. How do you find uh, an inexpensive website to build a club website? Um, is Pam here? Or Linda, do you have that suggestion? Um, yeah. Um, there's a couple of things. And I, again, I'm just going to go more into that a little bit when we have our boot camp in a couple of weeks. But the CFWC website is built on a, what's called WordPress platform. And it's a fairly easy to learn, I, I believe, and it's very one of the high rated and very, very popular website building um, programs out there. There's also Weebly and different things like that. Um, do you, if you don't have a website at all, um, I would suggest, and you don't have anyone in your club that's able to sort of start you from the ground up, I would suggest that you hire a website designer and you could you could look for them in your in your community that it, you know there there's a lot of possibly a, a high school or college student um, they're easy to find and once you got your website off the ground and going then one of your club members i believe would one of your newer club members or anyone would be willing to sort of take it and run with it and keep it updated once it gets built it's it's fairly simple to to maneuver and update things Thank you, Linda. Our next question comes from Kathy Holm. Kathy? That was super quick. I just put my hand up. Um, Linda, can you give me uh, the general cost per year for some of these, um, like WordPress? I know GoDaddy, we had, our district had um, previously gone with them and they were like $99 or something like that a year. How much would WordPress or what's the going rate? Um, well, GoDaddy, there's a couple of different things. So you have to have, the, there's the website design and then there's the website hosting. So GoDaddy is more like the hosting. They make sure that your website lives on the internet. They make sure that, you know, that sort of things. Um, then the website design is a little bit 
uh, is is separate and it's not very either one of them is not particularly expensive um GoDaddy, as you said is 99 dollars. there's other ones that are in that same price range i don't know um, i was not involved in the actual launching and getting those plat those programs done uh, cost wise so reggie might have be able to tell us what the club what cfwc spent but um back which would have been when would we have our new website last june i believe may and june is when we we did that but um kathy when if that, you don't mind i'm going to get some information and have that readily available for the boot camp that we're doing in a couple yeah. weeks that's perfect okay. thank you so much linda yeah this was sort of a more of a basics overview we were so Right. The other thing you have to remember is um, at state, we have a whole different need and a different number of things on our website that you guys aren't going to need. So when you look at our prices, it, you have to also compare what you need for your prices, but we're willing to go there with you. Um, Mickey, Mickey, you have a comment or you, would you like to share? Uh, yes, I wanted to share and I'm sorry that my um, camera still isn't working. But anyway, uh, we got a Google Suite account and for our club, which allowed us to get emails that are specific to our job. So we have um, president at uh, womensclubofindio.com. We have like a president, dean, membership. So those uh, emails will pass on to our other officers. When we leave that job, it'll pass to someone else so that we never have to put our personal information out there. So for the club business, it's just on that particular email and um, it's been very helpful for us. Thank you very much for doing that. You know, it was in my speech about four years ago and I never had anyone try it. So I'm, I'm just so thrilled that somebody's doing that because the transition every two years is a lot for clubs. And so if you have, a presidential email that you hand off that has everything already built in it that just takes away all the notebooks and everything you can just access and you can search your email for their resources so it's a really good tool thank you i forget about that one so thank you mickey all right so that's an excellent tool what else are you guys using that you'd like to tell us about oh we know your superstars are out there Okay, Sandy, tell us what you're doing that you'd like to share about. You need to unmute, my love. Oh, I just started constant comment, and um, they were very, very helpful. They actually had a live person call me, and then we did a conference call, and it was very, very good. Um, I'm just starting it, and I'm thinking it's going to help us with two things. One is uh, when you write your emails, um, you can send them out to everybody easily, but you also can get back who opened it, who actually saw it. And to me, as the I'm going to transfer this um, use when I'm uh, Orange District. Well, now I'm going to use it for my Orange District, but also for my club. But the other other thing was. Um, now I can't remember. Anyway, it will take a hold. It will let you um, work on Facebook and your emails and help you format them and do everything. It is. It does cost uh, about $35 a month, which I was told is kind of expensive. I don't know because I've never done this before, but they were certainly helpful. And you can put up to 10 people on with the same access that the uh, owner has so that uh, I'm putting my club president on with me and some other people. So between all of us, I think this is gonna help us um, be more successful with our uh, emails and stuff. Thank you, Sandy. It's constant contact. And Vicki, would you like to just kind of tell us a little bit about it? Because I learned about it from you and I love the tool, so. Yeah, no, I'm glad that someone, a district is using it, it's great. The fee is actually based on the number of subscribers that you have mm -hmm. so uh for example the state pays it is at 49 dollars a month because we get a 30 percent discount because we pay annually so if you know rather than monthly so if you want to do that um uh, essentially you have 10 users because they're not allowing us to have 10 users 
we found a way around that, but it's interesting they'll let you do that. Um, I'll have to check into it. They're a great group. Constant contact is great if you want to start out, and they are real readily available. They got me started on Quick Bites, and I had no idea what I was doing when someone said, Vicki, why don't you do Quick Bites? And I said, you're crazy. And Kathy McGraw says, no, no, we think you can do it. So I did it. And it's still going. <laughs> it hasn't crashed yet. Anyway, uh, but I'm glad that Orange is doing it. That's terrific. Thank you. Yes, and I find it to be extremely valuable as you're calendaring out your Facebook. I can do it for three weeks in a row if I want to go on a break. And therefore, I'm not doing it every single day. And I just find it be, I have a life again, and that's amazing. So, excuse, um, me. excuse me, Sonia. It's about, if the Facebook is actually with email plus on constant contact, it's okay. not the regular subscription. So in case thank anybody's you. thinking about doing that, it's different. Well, thank you for the reminder. Thank you so much. I am learning a tremendous amount from Vicki uh, about how to use it effectively. And I appreciate the time that she has spent over. So we're going to move back in without any more sharing. Um, teammates, you're all here. Everyone's yes. Very good. Thank you so much. So our next uh, speaker is Lou Arredondo. She is our new uh, California Club Woman Chairman. If you are not getting California Club Woman, you need to get California Club Woman. I uh, am very excited to work with her. She teaches me a little bit or a whole lot every day. Uh, Lou, take it away. Thank you, thank you, Sonia, and good afternoon, everybody. I'm gonna try and make this super quick. Can everybody see my screen? Mm -hmm. Perfect. So I'll talk briefly. I have a few announcements, but our theme for the October issue is social influence for change, embracing our diversity. And we're really excited about that issue. Some quick, Things that are really important to the deadline for submissions is September 10th, 2021. I'm looking for articles. I don't want them to exceed 300 words. I love that you have been sending in articles that are 1,000 words, 1,500 words. It's great reading for me on the weekend, but I have to shave them down, and I don't want to take away the essence of what you're writing about. So try to stick to 300 words. Be sure to include three to five pictures because that's the attention grabber. And we do have a growing external audience. So we want them to be excited. They might not look at the text right away, but a picture could cause them to go, wow, I want to read more about this. Um, club news should include a picture, two to three sentences about the event, the project, the fundraiser. But don't just tell me the, the tidbits about the event, like the event was held on this day. We did X number of boxes for veterans. Those, that's all really good information, but also include what the, if it's a veteran event, include what a veteran had to say about it. Put, put a quote from them because that will grab the attention of all the readers. And then advertising can be emailed to me and you can put a check in the mail. I trust you all. So I, I do get the checks and, and we can process it, but if I get the artwork first, it's much easier for me to put it in the club woman. And then anything, any communications, any articles, anything at all, please submit it to cfwccommunications at gmail.com. Uh, where we do need help is we're looking for more reporters because we have four reporters now. We need reporters in every corner of our state because that's the only way that we're going to get all the great things going on across the state from local events in your area to uh, events and, and service projects that you guys are doing, all of that we need information on. Uh, we are looking for a member to, or several members to help us with subscriptions and advertising. We'll go through the details of what that looks like in boot camp in August. But if you could just keep that in the back of your mind, if you know somebody who's really good with people, really good with an ask, then this might be perfect for them. I've been gathering most subscriptions and advertising just using email. So I'm not having to hoof the pavement at all. I, I literally have just been sending out to my network saying, hey, I've got this great platform. I, if you're looking to expose your work across the state of California, this is a great platform and low cost for you to do it. Um, be sure to also look forward. Many of the articles coming in are telling me 
in the past what has occurred, and that's great. We want that information, but we also want to look forward. If you can write an article, maybe you have a great event coming up for the holidays. That would be great to put in there because now it creates a following where readers will come back and say, hey, what happened with this event? in the Diablo district or in the San Gabriel Valley district. So we want future looking events as well. We are continuing to work on the online presence of California Club Women and getting it to a point where we can offer subscriptions online. Until then, we will post copies of the Club Women in PDF file format at cfwc.org. So just keep that in mind. Those are some quick um, announcements. And then I'm going to jump into some quick article writing tips. We will go into this in more depth for boot camp, but so this is just uh, basics. So keep in mind that your work is your thumbprint. When people read your article, they are getting a picture and a glimpse of you and who you are and what you're passionate about. Focus on human interest. The tone and emotion you put into an article is what makes it interesting. The, this is the one place where you don't have to focus so much on technical aspects, but focus on the story itself. As if you were sitting across from lunch with your best friend and you're sharing a story of what you experienced. You're not gonna just give the technical details to that friend. You're gonna talk about how you felt, what excited you, and all this emotion is gonna bubble up outside of you. If you were really excited about it, it's gonna show in your face. You're gonna get excited about it. Be clear about why you're writing the article. Are you looking to inform the audience, persuade them to agree with you on a particular issue? Are you, did you observe something that you just think everybody should know about? Are you evaluating a concept or are you trying to evoke a particular emotion? If you know that, it makes it easier to write the article. Write in the active voice. We've heard this uh, from Pam earlier. The active voice in terms of what we are doing. Come up with a catchy, clever, attention, grabbing, and visually interesting title. I always suggest if you're really creative, you could probably come up with your title first and then write your article from there. But I'm not that creative. I'm not that creative of a person. So I tend to write first, then go back and come up with my title. Title should be whatever is going to grab the attention. So whatever process works for you, that's what you should focus on. Start your article with something that really draws out the attention of the reader. It could be shock value, it could be emotion, it could be curiosity, you could share an anecdote. It's just something to bring them in. So when somebody reads your piece, it takes an individual seven seconds to determine if they're gonna read further. If you get them for seven seconds, you'll have them for 20. If you keep them for 20 seconds, you'll have them for up to three minutes and three minutes is a very long time. So uh, think about what you can do to just grab their attention. The body should then answer the question raised or the, the effort that you're making. It should explain the curiosity. It should uh, calm the shock or it should, uh, if it's a point of reflection in your intro, then it should expand on that reflection. Don't rely on the computer for spell check. There's many other uh, resources out there, Grammarly, get a second set of eyes on it. Those are, that always works really well. Um, decide on the tense of your story, present and future tense, capture people's attention more than past tense. So even if you're talking about something in the past, you could talk about the present emotion or the present excitement or the future plans in that area as part of that. Don't just leave it all 100% about the past. And then avoid any lengthy complex paragraphs because the club woman, we're moving it in a direction of a lifestyle magazine. So anything technical related to your efforts, that's better suited for Quick Bites or another platform where you can go into more depth. We want your content to be generalized so that it works for the internal audience, but it also works for the external audience. Accuracy is important. If you're utilizing research online for something, cite your work and, and don't lie. Um, keep it, if it's your words, keep it your words. If it's 
somebody else's, be sure to quote them. We want to make sure uh, we will get emails from outside sources asking us where article information came from. I need to be able to go back to the writer and say, where did you get your information? Because I've got a question on it. Um, keep the audience in mind and what really matters to them. We're really passionate about items, but we have to keep in mind what others around us are passionate about. I love legalese, but everybody else will go to sleep. The things that excite me where I go, oh, yippee, legalese. Everybody else is going, oh my goodness, please wake me up when you're done. So things that are we're passionate about, others might not be. Uh, avoid cliches and sentimental statements unless it draws out the emotion and that's what you're trying to do. Use anecdotes and direct quotes to tell the story. Avoid the use of I believe, I think. Have the reader, give them a, a, an action to, to perform. And then consider more than one point of view. If you're writing about something controversial, bring in other points of view. And then lastly, don't ever forget writing an article is a team sport. Once you're done, the best set of eyes is someone else that can just read it and tell you, this is what I got out of it. That will give you time to go back and make edits, even if it's just about an event at your club. Ask somebody else to read it and say, what do you think? Did this excite you when you read this? Does it make you want to call my club and say, hey, I'm in your area. I like what you did here. I want to come see your club. Can I come to a meeting? So keep that in mind. And then one minute, Lou. I'm wrapping it up right now. So good timing. So these are practice questions that we're going to work on in boot camp that will help bring out your creative juices. And I want to end with a story about an article that is called Pickles and Lemonade Change Lives. It's about a club event for shoes and socks where we put shoes and socks on, on children in need in the community. And at, my job was to go down and keep kids five to eight years old patient while they waited to get their shoes and socks. And I'm going down the line going high five, high five, high five. And I, I come to a little girl and I, I say, she was just like this. And I go, how are you? And she goes, I'm just so excited. And so I bent down and I go, me too. And I go, how old are you? And she says, five. And, and I said, Mama Lou is 53. And she said, whoa, and you're still alive. So <laughs> the rest of the day, she took care of me. And I wanted to write an article about my experience. But at the end of the day, she came up to me and she said, I want to be in the club. And I had a sticker and I peeled it off and I planted it on her chest and I inducted her right then and there. This five-year-old went out and inducted 378 elementary school students to do good in her community. That's the story. That was the story. So, and she raised $1,000 selling pickles and lemonade to change lives. That's the story. Our event was the byline. It was the catalyst. So those are the things to look for when you're going through and, and looking to write an article. I'm excited to see you on August 7th for boot camp, and I'm done. Thank you, Lou. Any questions for Lou? Uh, you want to unshare and then I can. Uh, we have one from Corinne. Corinne, you have a question, please. You have to unmute, my love. Thank you. Sorry. Um, I wanted to ask Lou about the um, communications boot camp. I just learned of it yesterday. Um, we have a club fundraiser, an in-person fundraiser I must attend. Is it going to be on YouTube? Because I really want to attend the boot camp, but I have to choose my club's event. Um, I'll address this one. Yes, it will be on YouTube eventually. What we'll try to do is figure out a way to record it. Um, six hours of recording is going to be a lot. So we'll have to think about that. But maybe we can break it down into 20 minute sections or something. Pam and I will go through that with you. We'll find what, a way to make it possible. Okay, Corinne? Okay, what, what is the time frame currently for the Sunday, August 7th boot camp? Um, Lou, you just had the time up. Do you mind telling everyone? We are going to tell you at the end. Um, we have yeah, two so, more speak. We have two more speakers. If we could just get through the last two speakers, and then okay. I will go through the whole thing with you guys. 
Um, Lynn, did you have a question on the floor? Um, the only thing I was going to say is I will be resending the August links and it will include the new uh, communication boot camp information. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Lynn. And we'll make sure that paperwork is openable. <laughs> okay, so we're going to move on to our next team member. Uh, Debbie, as you all know, ran our fantastic convention. Thank you so much, Debbie, for everything that you do. Um, she's become a very close friend of mine, and she's an excellent person to ask questions of. And um, Debbie, we're just so glad you're on our team. So today she's going to talk about PowerPoint. Welcome, Debbie. Uh, you need to unmute, my love. Sorry about we that. Do it. We do it too. <laughs> we do. Oh, and I'm not really going to talk about PowerPoint. We've done that before. We'll probably talk about it at the boot camp. And I wanted to deal with PowerPoint today because, quite frankly, I've had quite a few people ask me to create PowerPoints for them because they don't know how. Uh, we just saw a lovely PowerPoint that Lou did. I'm not going to show you anything nearly that fancy, I must admit. Um, if you are new to PowerPoint, I encourage you to take the information you have today. Um, also in the handouts on the very last page, there's um, a YouTube video, which is really helpful. I, I put, if you go to YouTube and query for the name, um, and it's, um, I've already lost a piece of paper, uh, Beginner's Guide to PowerPoint, excellent video that'll help too. Um, and I would encourage you to go on if this will, with my background, I don't know if this will show, I encourage you to go find the pamphlet that our leadership chair, Dory, put together called Making a PowerPoint Presentation. She's got some wonderful advice in there about the content of PowerPoint. Mine is more um, the, the mechanics of getting a PowerPoint done. It's a fairly simple program. I encourage you to take what you learned today and play with it. I was, as I was listening to other speakers, I was thinking maybe the little PowerPoint that I'm gonna to create today, maybe I will save it and put it in the Dropbox because quite that you could download and play with. Because quite frankly, one of the best ways that I learned PowerPoint when I was still working at the phone company is that we had a PowerPoint presentation that we had to show as a mandatory training class and there were errors in it. And I called the course developer to ask her to make changes. And she said, no, Debbie, do it yourself. Here's how you do it. So I got to play with an existing PowerPoint program, which helped me um, maneuver and, and learn it better. And that might work for you too. So I, I will probably put this uh, PowerPoint that I'm creating today up in the Dropbox. So let me share my screen and get right into PowerPoint. Um, if you open, oh, no, 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 we need to change this too. Okay. Um, I have several PowerPoints that are already opened um, and you will see them here, but if you're doing PowerPoint for the very first time, or if you are creating a new PowerPoint, if you click over here on new, this is the screen that you're more likely to see. And let me get this thing going too. Let's see, let me get this thing going. You can do the templates. They have some templates here you can deal with, but they will set up really the whole format of your PowerPoint. And I would really suggest that you start with a blank presentation. And this is the screen that it will look like. This, I won't go over the top. Hopefully you all know Word and Excel. And if not, let me know and I will go over that with you some other time. But there are the same kinds of uh, tabs up here and the same kind of ribbon down here that you have with PowerPoint or with uh, Excel and Word. Um, there are tabs here for slides and font and drawings and various things that you can do with your PowerPoint slide. This area in here is where you would click a slide. This is the opening slide format. And then over here are things called thumbnails. As I build slides, you'll see things fill in there. So let me add a slide. Um, communicating with members. It's as simple as clicking inside this text box and then typing. Um, it does say you can click to add a subtitle. If you want one, you don't have to. I am going to add a, uh, I, I won't. My fingers are too fat. I'm having trouble today. Um, and, and it's done. So now we've created one slide. How do you create another? There are several ways to add a second slide. One would be to come up here in the slides area and click on the picture of a new slide and you'll get another slide that you notice is laid out a little differently um, because it's not the title slide. 
you could also click on the words new slide and now you get a variety of layouts if you had a picture that you wanted to put in with a caption they've sort of got that laid out for you i'm not going to add that but the easiest way would be to put your cursor over here in this gray area right click and put in a new slide easiest way to do that and let's see so i'm going to create another slide and i'm going to call this powerpoint tips and i want you to think in terms of when you are deciding to build a powerpoint show powerpoint presentation there are things that you should be aware of like the audience and the venue to say nothing of a message done now we've got two slides if I were doing this presentation um, before a group of people, I might want to spend some time talking about each of these things. So I would probably want to build another slide called audience and remind people that what they want to keep in mind when they're building the slide, it, when they're building the show, is this audience going to be your club or district members? Or will it be the public? And I say that because how you do things, the size of the font may be different. The, the back of the, the information, uh, the words you use, all of that might change depending on who the audience is. And I'm going to add one more because the other piece that you really need to keep in mind when you're building this is the venue. And is your venue going to be via Zoom? I can always do that. I always make it VIZ. I don't know why I do that. Via Zoom, or you're going to be in person in a large room or in person in a small room. And the reason I say the venue is important, because if in fact you are in a in a, on Zoom, the size of this font might be fine. If you're going to be in a large room, where is the screen going to be? How are people going to see it? The font may need to be bigger. And you would change the font just like you would in Excel or Word. You highlight, you highlight the words, and you go up here and change the font size or change the font type. Just all those kinds of um, all, all those kinds of things that you want to take a look at. Now, depending on, let's see what this would look like if I were showing it this way. And you can come up here to slideshow from the beginning or down at the bottom of the screen there's this thing that looks like a, a standalone uh, a screen you click on the screen and it will show you what this slideshow looks like and you advance it by hitting either the enter key or the uh, arrow keys front and back or the space bar there is lots of ways to doing this but you know it's kind of kind of stark Depending on what it is, who I'm showing this to and what the purpose is, I might not want it to be a white background with black lettering. I might want to make it to jazz it up a little. And I can do that very simply by going up here to the design tab or the design, yeah, design tab. And automatically you'll see some, let me come here to the first one. You'll see as I scroll across these things, the layout of my slideshow changes. And I can click on this like double arrow down here and you can see a whole bunch of other things. So you can pick and choose depending on the, the purpose, who the venue is, what the venue is. You know, you might not want to show something like this in a large room just because of the colors. I like this one. This one is really neat. The only problem with this one is that it looks fine for the opening screen, but I don't like how it shows the other screens. I don't like the fact that the letters are dark. Um, the title is down at the bottom of the page. So you want to kind of take a look at that. If you don't like this design that you've picked, you can just come back up here and you click another one. And I'm going to click on this guy just because I, I like it and it kind of stands out for today. Debbie, you have one minute. Okay, then I'm going to 
skip really quickly and tell you that you can add pictures. I will probably do this then in boot camp, show you how to add pictures, show you how to transition things so that when you do something, all those words don't have to show up at once. Like, let's look at this real quick. Be aware of the audience, the venue, the message. If in fact you were doing this, especially in a live presentation, I will go ahead and stop this for now. Um, you can have things pop up on the screen one at a time rather than have the all the words on the screen all at once. I also encourage pictures. Too many words can be boring and busying and confusing. So a picture or two on each screen is also handy to have and I won't have time to show you that. So we'll do that at a future time. Right. But I want you to consider this um, think about PowerPoint, actually, quite frankly, listening to everybody else right now, PowerPoint feels old school to me, but it's still a way to communicate with your members and you can use it in person meetings or on zoom and it's a way of displaying information so that people can see it as well as hear it. Because learners learn differently and some people need to see it and not just hear it. Thank you. I'll be I'll, I'll conclude with that. Thank you, Debbie. Um, Kathy, I'm going to push your question to the end because there's two two more people, and then we will. I'll just hang out and answer everyone's questions, but I want my team to be released if they need to go. Um, all right, Debbie, let me take you off of the spotlight. Thank all right, you. you guys. So for some of you, you know that I'm a photographer, and you know that I do this as a profession, and I jumped right into becoming California's. Mm -hmm. A uh, photographer, just because that's something I'm comfortable with. Let me know if, if someone give me a thumbs up that you can see the screen. Okay, fantastic. So this was our last fall board and I have put in the packet for you a list of things that you should get when you do photography for an event. I get asked this question a lot. And so I wanted to go over it super fast with you guys. Um, so you want to go to the club website before, it, how many of you do me a thumbs up or give me a high five if you guys have ever been the club photographer, because we ask our members a lot to do it, but do we actually ever take a minute to give them a list of what we expect? And then on the other side, when all of a sudden there isn't a photo that they really wanted, everyone is so disappointed. So to put that in front of everything, make a list. And I put a list that I work with currently and I literally take a pen and pencil, wear a little uh, saddlebag purse, and I mark them off, making sure that everyone is happy. So you don't want to take a photo that anyone will be embarrassed of, number one. Number two, you want to include as many people in the meeting as possible, but you want them to be aware that you're taking a photo. You want to include things like, I'm, I apologize, I'm going quickly. And Barbara, you look amazing in pink, so let's do this more often. <laughs> so you notice that every award has a photo. You need to teach your leaders what the photo is so that they feel good about what the photo is. So Dory is an excellent student. And every time I taught her to look at me and smile, she knew to look for the camera. She knew how to stand properly. She knew to get one foot in front of the other. She knew to breathe on two. And she would give me a smile so I could get that shot that she wanted to use in publications. So this is a gentleman that came and spoke that day get those photos. You will want to have those photos for your newsletters. But every single, during the break, when everyone is wandering around, get your table photos. Go to each table and get a group shot of every single. Pull them aside. Get their costumes. Be the fun person in the room. Look at these smiles. Aren't they amazing? This was our fall meeting and we were doing Christmas sweaters in September, if you can imagine. I was dressed as Santa Claus and I had a little girl come up to me and give me her Christmas list. I had a ball. So there are other things. Look at all these women. They look fantastic, right? Get the glasses, get the moments, but don't forget the board. Take the picture with the president. Take the president around the room and get all the photos that you can get with the president. People love them. Okay, so projects. We love projects, right? And so it's really important that you take a picture of the project. In your thank you notes, use the pictures of the project. Take a picture of all the cards that were available that we did for the veterans that day. Tons of cards, little gifts, 
And look at Wendy, isn't she adorable? Look at how cute that is with that ornament. Take the moments between the speeches. Um, and then here's the other thing about projects. You don't always have to have a face. It can actually be somebody writing a card. It can be somebody from the back writing a card. Can you see how you could use those in your publications? Okay, so now I'm gonna jump forward. I'm gonna go down here real quick. Here are my group photos by area for the board. And these were all the winners of the ugly Christmas. And look how Dory always looks at me. Please teach your leaders to look at you to get that photo that they want, okay? Auction table. Um, and then we come down here and got the wait staff. Now, when you send a thank you note to the hotel, you can send them that picture. That might be a really good photo for them. And that gives them a chance. The very end of this is yes, don't do broad sweeping views, but when they're all holding hands singing peace on earth, that's a good photo. When the hands in between, that's a good photo. Take those photos, take those moments. Now, I know that not everyone has a chance to be able to afford a photographer. So here are my suggestions. Um, consider a local community college photo group um, and offer a scholarship with a mentoring. Uh, yes, I'd be happy to be your mentor for a photography group. I could work with them on Zoom. We could go over their photo list ahead of time. They go do the shoot and then I'll help them edit. They're not gonna know what you do by you just handing them something and having them run around the room. This is mentoring and it can be fantastic with just a little bit of guidance. The other thing I wanted to make sure that you knew is that you could create a job description for a young person and actually make a difference in a child's life that doesn't usually get a scholarship. Creative children aren't, aren't always the, the A students. So if you create a scholarship for either um, a website or a social media or a um, camera person, those would be different children than the ones that you see always get the scholarships. Okay, let's talk about equipment. Cameras are not expensive anymore. Your iPhone is so much better than what I had for my first camera, let me reassure you. There are so many great ways to use your iPhone. It's a little bit different than a camera, but it's so possible. So if you have a teenager that's bringing in a new iPhone, let them do it, that's fine. Then you just have to make sure that you help them and mentor them through the photo list. Sony cameras are excellent. My Sony camera fits in my bag. It's teeny tiny and it does 48 megapixels per picture. So it's fantastic. And you can get them used on local websites, on, uh, on Facebook Marketplace for a lot less than it ever was in the past. Use the used. I gave you a place to go to find those. Um, so here's my offer this year. I am passionate about photography, you can tell. I love getting a good photo and I want that for you too. So this year I'm offering to come before your event and help and mentor your person through the photography event photography. That would you, if you're interested in that at all, I put it into the speeches for the year and you can send it to CFWC communications and I would be happy to help you with that. Now, Linda Coons asked me if I had a media release and I kind of sent her to the World Wide Web but then I went, well, I have one for all of my photography clients. So let me just adapt it to what we do. So here is your media release in our packet and it's real basic. But I have to tell you this week, we, you have to be very aware of people that work in the military or ex-cops or ex-inspectors. They cannot be on any social media. So you need to be aware of who can and cannot have their photos put up in a social outlet any kind of platform. There's 29 social media platforms. You need them to sign this every year. And, and if they're not on your list, you cannot take their photo. Does that make sense? Thumbs up? Okay, questions, super fast. Anyone have a question for me? Was that too much too fast? <laughs> yes, Linda. You have to unmute my love. Okay, um, what do you, how would you handle it regarding, you're at a district meeting, okay, and you have one or two people that are going around and they're taking pictures, um, 
they don't know unless somebody shouts at them, don't, don't take my picture. I don't want to be on Facebook. How do you handle something? The, the release form here is great for like clubs and stuff like that, but like at a district event. Okay, so Linda, I'm going to ask you to wait just a minute and stay, okay. and I will go through that whole thing for you, but it, um, I would really like Barbara to finish this up because she prepared a no speech. Problem. And then I will stay for as many questions as you have. Okay, thank you. Okay, Barbara. Yes. This is Barbara Biley Beard. She is our incoming president, and she very gracefully uh, said that she would come and talk about the future of communications. Thank you, Barbara, for being here today. Yes. Uh, yes. Thanks for having me. You know, I think that one of the most important things that Sonia and I, we met for about an hour ahead of time, was she wanted to know how do we get to the working women in communications? I think this is going to be a biggie for us in the next few years. I've been a club woman for 32 years. 27 new members I have brought into Federation. And how do we get those members? How do we communicate with them? Have you ever gone to a club or a district meeting and the lady comes in and then she tries to sneak out after lunch during the presentation and she gets these not so nice looks from some of the people at the head table or other people that might be sitting around at the round tables. Maybe you could put it in your next newsletter and say, come when you can, stay as long as you can, leave when you must, there won't be any fuss. How about we really welcome and embrace these people to come when they can? You know, the Women's Club of Downey has a program that goes from 11 to 11.30 is social time. From 11.30 to 12 is your business meeting. A lot of things are conducted during the committee meeting. And from 12 to 12.30, you have lunch. And from 12.30 until about 12.52, you have your program. Then you have your announcements, your drawings, and you adjourn your meeting at one. People can stay longer, they can come earlier, but you give a time so that people can just slip in and out. And we have to do that for the working women that are going to be joining our clubs. I was one of them until last year. So every meeting I went to, you know, I had to really look at my time and schedule it. So if we'll do that, or maybe put that on the back of our business card when we're, uh, or on our, you know, little flyer that is your application, so that they'll know that they can come and just enjoy, choose a project, be accepted, and work when they can. The other thing that um, Sonia asked me to, to touch on was a topic for speeches. Maybe if you will ask your chairs to be prepared so that during their month, if it's breast cancer for October or pinwheel, your chairman might be able to put something out again in your newsletter so that you might have a working mom, you might have a grandparent, someone that is interested in coming to your club or district meeting for that reason. How could I be of assistance? You know, let them know that we have a job, a project for them to work on. I have filing cabinets in my garage and in them I have uh, different drawers for workshops, speeches, installations, four drawers on reports, ladies. <laughs> so anything on reports I should be able to help with. Third thing Sonia asked me to ask to speak on was an outline for your speeches. What is your passion? Maybe you have a few prepared speeches. Like Pam said, she went straight to another one to grab some of the information she wanted to use today. <laughs> if your passion is membership, maybe you want to talk about the pinwheel project. <laughs> or effort. Art, art in the community might be what you want to talk about. Have a few of your speeches ready. Have you ever gone somewhere and the speaker didn't show up? Oh, I'm available. You can just say, I could talk about that. Maybe not exactly what that speaker was going to talk on, but you could give an impromptu small presentation. You might not have some of the goodies you need, but if you did, it might be really appreciated. Clearly communicate. If someone asks you to speak, ask them to go to CFWC itinerary. Get from them like Debbie, if I'm going to speak at the uh, Painted Turtle Camp, how long do you want me to talk? Do you want a Q&A period? 
And what is the attire? What are we going to wear? What kind of shoes should I have on? Are we going to hike around? So just try to know that this is your fun time for learning. Uh, whatever you put into your speech, however you want to ask a working woman to come and preview according to your bylaws, do they come once, twice, three times before you put them in as a club member? If you learn your audience a little bit ahead of time, get them involved, always have some kind of a giveaway. With Valerie, it just has to be chocolate. So as you're reading your audience, you're going to know how long you can do uh, your presentation and probably do your Q&A. Sonia, that's it in a nutshell. Thank you. Oh, you're the best. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so we're going to stop the recording and then we are going to share. So anyone that would like to go, you are welcome to go.